Good morning and welcome to online worship here at Mission St. Mary Magdalene. I'm Pastor Lisk, I am the vicar here, and I welcome you to this service. I hope that you have downloaded the bulletin, be prepared to worship and sing up a storm, and we will begin with our prelude. Thank you. 
Blessed be God, most holy, glorious, and undivided Trinity. And blessed be God's reign now and forever. Amen. God be with you and also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name. For you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, our God, creator of heaven and earth, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have revealed yourself as a heavenly Father to all your children. Bless, we pray, all earthly fathers. Strengthen them to nurture, protect, and guide the children entrusted to their care. Instill within them the virtues of love and patience. May they be slow to anger and quick to forgive. And through the ministrations of your Holy Spirit, may all fathers be strong and steadfast examples of faithfulness, responsibility, and loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is a reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout. Violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire that shut up in my bones. I am weary and holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear Mary, many whispering, terror is all around, denounce him, let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed and we can prevail against him and take out a revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble and they will not prevail, for they will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgiven. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteousness, you, test, you see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is Psalm 69, which we will now read responsively. Surely, for your sake, have I suffered reproach? I have become a stranger to my own kindred. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. I humbled myself with fasting.
Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. Hide not your face from your servant. Draw near to me and redeem me. A reading from Paul's letter to the church in Rome. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be destroyed, and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But we, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them. For nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. 
Are not two sparrows sold for a penny, yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father? And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I've come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I preach these words to you in the name of God, Creator redeemer, sustainer. Well, one of the things that I discovered as a pastor is that when people get baptized or when they come to the faith, they hear all of the joyous parts of the gospel. And they assume that life as a Christian is going to be all about those joyous parts of the gospel. They believe that their relationship with God will make their life easier. In other words, with God on their side, they'll just slide through life with no problems. Really? And then we have today's gospel. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword, says Jesus. Really? Hmm. Is he kidding? I don't think so. And as proof, consider this. Sometime in the next day or weeks or so, in your everyday comings and goings, your normal ongoing conversations with people, try doing something like this. Try saying something like, man, went to church on Sunday? You wouldn't believe the lessons that we heard. They were monumental, changed my life. Or try saying something like, one of the hymns we sang, it buckled my knees, it was so moving. Or maybe, a little self-flattery of course, the preacher this last Sunday, he really preached up a storm. Or try this, looking at someone who might even be a little distressed or even not, say something like, how can I be praying for you today? Now some will receive all of that with welcome and delight. However, more times than not, people will receive that off-puttingly. Divisions will arise, frictions will arise, things in that conversation will go a different direction. You see, the peace that we know as disciples, as Christ followers, that peace of Jesus can and does bring division. It can and does incite harassment. It can and does create major pushback and resistance. So here in this gospel lesson from Matthew, Jesus is preparing his 12 disciples to go out on mission without him. They are to demonstrate by what they say and by what they do what God's reign looks like what it looks like to have life with new possibilities, what it looks like to have life with healing, wholeness, truth-telling, and new healed relationships. And what Jesus says very plainly is, it will not be a walk in the park. And what he does is he begins to instruct his disciples about the cost of discipleship, a disciple, a Christ follower, what is that going to cost? And there's no sugarcoating. 
There's no ducking it. There is clear description about the dangers of the mission. Jesus comes, as my grandfather used to say, right down Main Street. And he basically says that testifying to God's shalom, God's reign of heaven, God's reign of God, God's perfection and wholeness, God's peace, into a world that is enraptured, that is in love with, that is in partnership with the powers and principality of this world, well, that is just plain dangerous. What Jesus goes on to say is some folks will welcome the good news, but others won't. They'll resist the message and the change that comes with it, and you, speaking to the disciples, will be the target of their resistance. And Jesus describes what some of that targeting will look like. Betrayed by your family, hated by all because of the very name of Jesus. That's the cost of discipleship and being a Christ follower. But Jesus also goes on to say that the disciples have what they need in order to endure. They already have what they can rely upon to handle rejection and violence. And it's one thing to remember the character and faithfulness of God, to anamnesis, that's when we say do this for the remembrance of me in the Holy Eucharist, to remember the character and faithfulness of God. God's character is that God is powerful, pronouncing judgments that yield life or death. Jesus makes this very plain when he says, do not fear the forces of evil that may kill the mortal body, but they cannot kill the soul. And God's faithfulness is tender, we are told, where we are told that God notices every sparrow that falls and that God counts every hair on our heads. So we are not to be afraid because we are of much more value than sparrows. But spread the gospel the disciples do. Spread the gospel message the disciples do. Now and after Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension. And it's important to remember that the cost of discipleship, of being a Christ follower, for them was all. All except John were killed for their faith in Jesus. And John, although he was not martyred for his faith, after they attempted to kill him by dropping him in boiling oil and he survived, he was sent to the island of Patmos to live out his days living in a cold, dark cave. So one has to ask, why did the disciples go forth? And even more pointedly, why did they continue to go forth in the face of the resistance that they encountered? even to the point of their death. Because the gospel is true, they believed. Because knowing the truth of Christianity was the core of their discipleship as Christ followers. Because they believed, as we should, that there is a God who loves us and who wants a relationship with us. And we believe this, as they did, not because it will translate itself into an easy path or a good life for us, but rather because the faith we profess, we profess is true. And what we profess aligns with what we believe and aligns with what we do, and that can lead to the shalom, the peace of God. Now, sometimes our faith, that process, leads us to make public stands that are not popular. And I can guarantee you, opposition will come and problems will arise, even as Jesus says from those most close to you, from those within your very inner circle, those you consider family. But as Christ followers, we do this. We consider the cost of discipleship as Christ's followers who know what it means to be alive in God. 
and to be in Jesus the Christ, whom we realize as the true meaning of life. You see, my friends, Jesus does not promise a life of ease, but Jesus does promise a life eternal. I preach these words to you in the name of God, creator, redeemer, sustainer. And now let us say responsibly the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, trite light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We have been united with Christ in his death and made one with him in his resurrection. In this newness of life, we raise our hearts in joyful prayer, responding, Kyrie eleison. That the church and her peoples may name the crosses that retard their work and ministry so that they may focus once again upon the sovereignty of Christ, who is the source of all our blessings. Let us pray. That we may be softened by the remembrance of personal darkness and despair and give generously to the relief of the hungry and the fearful, the sick and those who work multiple jobs and still struggle to provide for the basic necessities of life. Let us pray. For all who hold positions of public trust and responsibility that may be serve the common good with integrity and sound moral judgment, let us pray. For those who are being cast out of their native land through political chaos, religious persecution, war and famine, natural disasters, and reasons that remain unknown, that they may find receptive countries as they search for a new homeland. Let us pray. For those who have died, especially, that they may join community of saints in whose fellowship we will one day reside. Let us pray. That the gift of Christ's presence among us may sustain and strengthen us as we share the faith of saints who have come before. Let us pray. Let us endure faithfully in the practice of intercession as we continue our thanksgivings, petitions for ourselves, and inter intercessions for others. Let us pray. Holy wisdom, in your loving kindness, you created and restored us when we were lost. Inspire us with your truth, that we may love you with our whole minds and run to you with open hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. Let us confess our sins to God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are like truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. 
that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Do not let us fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And now let us pray together. Eternal God, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your spirit that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day and all our days in love to one another and to you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And the blessing, mercy, and grace of God Almighty, the Creator God above us, the Redeemer God beside us, and the Sustainer Spirit God within us be upon you and remain with us forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve Jesus Christ, our Savior. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.